This is January 20th, 2011. I'm Courtney Engel, and you're watching Streamlining Social Media, Episode 15. Hold on tight, we've got a lot to cover today. Starting off, we have big news coming out of Google. Eric Schmidt, who's been with Google for the last 10 years, today has announced that he is no longer going to be acting as CEO. This will be effective at the beginning of April. It was quite interesting to see that just after this announcement, he took to Twitter, having not sent any tweets since early December, to say his adult supervision on a day-to-day -day basis is no longer needed. Google did say in their press conference they released the audio transcript as well as their uh, report earnings through YouTube, so you could listen into the call from YouTube. But they did say in this that he will be acting as executive chairman. What does the executive chairman do differently than the CEO? Not so sure. This leaves Paige and Bryn to be able to figure out what to do with the rest of the company. So I look to see him most likely be phased out, but again, nothing is confirmed. We'll see in April what's going to be happening there. Also in the news, new Facebook scam alert. Um, if you are clicking on any links that say that they are going to tell you all of the people viewing your profile, don't buy it, don't believe it, it is just a big hoax. That's news coming out of allfacebook.com, so check that out. Folks place, they were out of town, it was just us. And it was weird and clunky and made me think of my parents, you know, I kept having that thought. I had done it in such a long time. I tried to show her how it all works. She made it very clear to me I was wasting her time. I'm not trying to say I know better, but I know better. It was me and two girls. I don't remember what they were getting at. It doesn't even feel right in your hands, you know? I was on a road trip, and I did it in a truck stop. Oh, uh, there was that time in college when the power went out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there really weren't any other options. Ever since I got the internet, I don't need it anymore. BanThePhoneBook.org is starting a YouTube campaign and looking elsewhere in social media as well to start getting rid of the phone book. Many people are turning to their mobile phone devices to look information up if they're on the go or to their computer if they're sitting nearby. So check out BanThePhoneBook.org. In other Google news, we have Google Voice now allowing number porting. They're beginning to test out this feature to be able to take any landline phone, any cell phone account that you have, and for $20, transfer that phone number over to your Google Voice account. Now, word of fair warning, your mobile phone service is noted to be terminated when you lose the number. So that would give up that number. Um, but if you happen to be switching from maybe one carrier to another, saying leaving AT&T and heading over to Verizon, why not port your information through Google Voice before getting that new iPhone over at Verizon? Look for that feature starting soon. Next up, we have the rise and fall of Yahoo, as posted over on TechCrunch's website. I can remember using Yahoo to write my senior research paper ages and ages ago and surfing Yahoo in command line interface. Hard to believe that the internet comes with a mouse and videos. Frankly, even then we didn't even have pictures, but still, take a look through what Yahoo has gone through. The burst of the tech world onto the scene and then the quick decline happening starting shortly after 2000 as Google starts to rise on the scene. And you can see by this point in time, there's only a shell of the company that once was technically actually left and a lot of their products they are getting outsourced and serviced elsewhere. You know, frankly, my main need for Yahoo is Yahoo Pipes and um, Flickr. So those two things alone keep me using anything that's Yahoo. If they were to sell those elsewhere, I wouldn't look back. That's the information coming from TechCrunch about Yahoo. 
Social Media Examiner has a few great tips in their most recent post on how to optimize your blog for Google. Some of the things are pretty obvious, so we'll take a quick peek over these things. One of them is to just don't be spammy, don't be disingenuous. A lot of things that they're saying is to target in your audience, to think about what your audience wants to read. And if you need to get some more traction and things going on, hire someone that has some, some writing skills, and that's completely okay. But as you're looking through you know, the content of what you're writing, sometimes you want to get in and do some research inside of a Google Keywords tool, so they give you a link and a video for that, as well as some additional ways of doing keyword research. Then as you scroll down, you want to get the all-in-one SEO pack if you happen to be using WordPress. The all-in-one SEO pack is hands down one of the best plugins that I use inside of WordPress. It's going to give you the exact placement of your keywords in the title area and making sure that things display as they should over on Google's website. So make sure to get in and check those out and make use of your canonical URLs. See the Google Webmaster blog post about that as this website points it out. Feel free to get in and check out the article. It just made the scenes recently over at socialmediaexplorer.com. Sorry, socialmediaexaminer.com. Also in the news, we have coming out of SEO Moz, 32 tactics to avoid in 2011. So good tips are coming in from there. Basically, again, related to SEO, we want to make sure Google's seeing our sites correctly, but there are some tactics that people are using that are frankly just not good. So for instance, some people who are using white text over a white background, trying to game the system by throwing in lots and lots of keywords, stuffing their keywords in, in ways that people wouldn't be able to see that they're there. So that's obviously a no-no. Don't put hidden text over an image or stuff your keywords, meaning make it almost unreadable to a human by simply throwing as many keywords in as possible. Also, don't do any of the link exchange programs that are out there. Make it be a, a sincere and genuine thing. And anything that resembles link farming is going to get shut down by Google. So keep that in mind. Another great blog post that I recently came across comes in from Mari Smith. Mari actually did a fantastic blog post detailing the how to appropriately tag people in Facebook. So tagging etiquette is big. I think that that's a huge deal. And as you are making use of tags in Facebook, I've seen this happen time and time again. People have tagged me in notes just to get me to come over to their note and comment on it and engage on it. I will say this, if it is personal friends and their personal blog, fine with me. But if it is a professional nature and they're tagging my personal Facebook account, I find that to be highly, highly offensive. So Mari gives you a great breakdown of how to tag somebody in a Facebook status update, what things can be tagged. So you can tag friends, fan pages, community pages, place pages, apps, events, and any kinds of groups that you've had before, whether old style of groups or the new style of groups and if it is something that is exclusive or private even if you tag it only other people that are invited to participate can get in to see that so that's great to know keep in mind again the tagging etiquette when possible tag somebody's fan page and not their personal profile if it is for business purposes and also if you're going to be tagging their fan page if you're including, for instance, and Mari demonstrated this one, she took a picture and said that she posted something that had an affiliate link in it. If you are going to do that, notice that Mari says right away she got in and deleted it from that person's fan page. The only exception to this is if the person that you're tagging, for instance, another business or whatever, their fan page, if their fan page is set up to only display content that they publish, you may not need this extra step of deleting it. If on the other hand, you post a an affiliate link or something that is promoting yourself as part of their program, meaning you earn a commission for sending somebody to their website that purchases something, you need to go get that off their wall because it's not fair for other people that may also be affiliates. It's seeming you know, just disingenuous and tacky, so avoid that one. 
Also in the news, we have the Starbucks app coming out on the iPhone. Uh, if you have a gift card through Starbucks, you can take a look at what's on your card, check your account. Not only that, but Starbucks now allows you, and this is part of the hot happening things in the mobile marketing trend, they'll give you a card that um, at the register you scan basically a certain number. They have a machine that will print out I'm guessing it's on the equivalent of QR codes. I haven't got into Starbucks to check it out yet. You snap a photo of the QR code and it can deduct it from your Starbucks gift card if you have one available. Um, this is being tested and rolled out across the nation. So look for it at a Starbucks near you. Get the app inside of the App Store for iTunes or on any other major mobile platforms. So it's available on Android and things as well. Mark Zuckerberg also makes headlines. He was recently named not only congratulations for the social network and unofficial take on how Facebook got started, made major, major awards at the Golden Globes this past week, but also Mark Zuckerberg was named as the worst dressed man in America this week. So if you want to dress like Mark, you can head over to markbymarkzuckerberg.com and purchase any items that you want. I thought the hoodie and t-shirts were classic, the uh, Adidas flip-flop sandals I wore myself as a competitive swimmer, but the dad pants or the elastic waist jeans that claim they claim Mark wears. I've yet to see him pull off that fashion faux pas, but check out Mark by Mark Zuckerberg.com if you want more. Finally, our last story of the day, Steve Jobs is taking a leave of absence. He will still be acting as CEO, but being a bit more hands-off at what's happening through Apple in the next few months. Again, he is citing health concerns. This was an area that was brought up and investigated to see have they revealed enough information just to simply say it's health concerns, or because he is a he is the head of a publicly traded company, do they need more information revealed about exactly what his health concerns are? Initially, the news came out about this this time of absence and that he will still act as CEO, and stocks plummeted quickly in Germany, but maintained basically the same average amount here in the states so realistically this hasn't had a major initial impact largely on Apple but they did roll this information out on a national holiday being President's Day in the United States they did that I'm pretty sure strategically to make sure there would be no major fluctuations in the stock value but again um, the information is coming out they revealed as much as they technically need to according to the SEC and so we wish jobs the best of quick quick health recovery and a return back to Apple. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, things you would like me to look at or review, head over to formspring.me slash Courtney Engel. Again, that's formspring.me slash Courtney Engel. You can also get this podcast available through iTunes. Just look for Courtney Engel in iTunes, and you can always subscribe by visiting my website, CourtneyEngel.com. This is, again, Streamlining Social Media, Episode 15.